Today I'm going to be talking about the physics involved with skipping a water polo ball and how to do so effectively. Skip shots, once mastered, are a sure way to score in a game, embarrass a goalie, or just impress your friends. Usually when a polo player decides to go for a skip shot, they do so in order to get the ball around their opponents and into the goal, hit the high bar on the goal post, or skip the ball under the goalie's arms and into the goal. Mostly, a ball being able to skip across water can be accredited to surface tension a natural property of water that allows it to resist an external force due to the cohesive nature of its molecules as a result of the hydrogen bonding between its molecules. In this diagram, we can see the forces that act on the ball as it skips on the water. Firstly, the gravitational force pulls the ball downwards to hit the water as the normal force, along with the backspin implemented on the ball at its release, causes it to be pushed back up. The frictional force slows the ball down and speeds up the periods between the skips. Another factor to take into consideration is the water surface. Water is almost never completely still, so when skipping a ball, it could impact the surface of the water on an incline or decline. This diagram shows the possible outcomes of each situation, and how this would affect the angle at which the ball bounces back up into the air. As you can see, in situation 1, the ball hits a decline, causing it to bounce off at a lower angle than if it had hit on an incline, like situation 2. When the ball hits the water, it creates a sort of depression in the surface of the water. Because of this, the ball can lose its spin and momentum, causing it to slow down or even stop completely. To avoid this, players often push themselves up and out of the water to gain leverage in order to shoot the ball down at the water with a lower angle, while simultaneously releasing the ball with as much force as possible to counteract the crater effect. Skip shots are also dependent on the player's use of torque when throwing the ball. By implementing a greater torque, or twist, a greater speed can be achieved. Typically, for a skip shot to be effective, the ball needs to reach a speed of at least 27 miles per hour prior to its initial skip on the water. By taking torque into account, a rotational aspect is introduced into this situation. However, water polo balls are designed to have grooves in them that are helpful to the players, but can disrupt and possibly have negative effects on the ball as it moves through the air. There are lots of other variables that can alter the skip shot's effectiveness, such as release of the ball, including three-finger release, two-finger release, and one-finger release. For female high school and college players, the index finger release is the first choice, as it creates the most ball spin, lifts the ball off the water with ease, and requires the least amount of force for the best results. For male high school players, the two-finger release is used. It requires slightly more power but allows for more speed and spin, while the average male college polo player typically utilizes the three-finger release, which requires the most amount of power and yields the strongest skip. Though this is a good place to start if you want to learn how to skip a polo ball, it's important to remember that different balls also have different skipping styles. An underinflated ball travels very differently from a properly or overinflated one. An old ball whose grip has been worn away is easier to skip than a new one whose rubber surface provides more friction. No matter what, no two skips are alike, so if you find what works for you, stick with it until you get a solid skip down.